Well, so Taipei Assassins has done this last game too. They put down more early wards than Nash and Sword. And if you look at the support's item choices already, Mistake has went with nothing but wards and potions, whereas Kane has went for the Fairy Charm. So early on, Taipei Assassins is looking for more map vision. They don't want to get caught out early by watch here. Maokai, extremely potent early ganker. They looked like they could just outlane. They're confident they can because that's what they did last game. They put the deep wards in pretty much the same spot. They're trying to figure out either of those spots is going to be the most likely gank pass for Maokai to come out of. So really, they're just going early start, trying to get no steals going on, playing it safe. Playing it safe indeed. So it looks like Lil is going to start off at the right with a lot of help by the looks of it, which means are they going to try and leech pull and try and save that smite, I wonder, on the red buff? There's four members of Taipei Assassins here, which tells me there's going to be an AD support lane on the top Yep. for Taipei Assassins. And no, they're going for an invade. They're well, going they could for an be going invade. for a delayed invade. They it have a Maokai South going to catch them out. They could hook in the blue, of course. He's just about to spawn. They could blue hook it in. They will do. They've got the damage. They're going to get the steal down. It will try and reset. Have they got enough damage, though? The rest of the night, it's sort of going to come around. They're going to have to give up on this one, I feel. You can see, but that's going to cause problems. And that means Watch is going to have to back away from this one. They've all backed away from it. And instead, Taipei Assassin's saying, fine, we'll just take it standard mode then. But look at this, Taipei Assassin's now taking the standard, and Watch is completely out of mana. It's going to be, he's going to need a lot of help on this red buff. Song's going to be very late to lane against Toys, so that delayed invade by Taipei Assassin's going to give him a very large early game advantage, both in the jungle and in mid lane. And Lil Balls picks up the blue, and there you go, Watch, like you say, very low on health. He's going to need help here. He's, he is going to get taken down very low by this red buff, I feel. Gonna try and he's going to have to pretty much no shop right after that. He's got no saplings left. He can't throw yeah. anything out. He's just going to tank it up now. And this is going to take him very low. And he should be fine. He means he's not going to... Yeah, like you say, he's going to have to shop straight off the back of that one. So, we do see the lane swatching around there. Which means Bibi and Mistake has Ezreal and Blitzcrank against McNoon in that top lane. How would you rate these two? And obviously, of course, down the bottom, you've got the opposite room. Is Kane and Prey on uh, Corky and Sona versus Shen. I think from a champion pick perspective, the Shen is much more capable of 1v2 laning. He does have Vorpal Spikes, which can pick up creeps from range. Also, his passive is very good at last hitting at the tower. Overall, though, with TPA pushing in with Blitzcrank and Ezreal, the mini kills should stay fairly close. What they have to watch out for is the three-man dive on either, either side. If they take too much poke while trying to get these mini kills, they have to play this 1v2 lane extremely conservatively. And very early on here, we see Watch coming up. He's got to be careful for a counter gank. With this, luckily Skarner's not there, but it's in his mind because in previous games, when you see a jungler come up to try help, very many times there's a third member up there to turn it. Yeah, instead, what Little Balls is very much focused on taking away his blue buff. Is he going to give that across, or is he just going to take it, try and level as quick as possible? Looks like he's going to level as quick as possible. He's just going to shield up on that one. You can see Mac News being forced on the turret. Both 2v1 lanes, of course, being forced back, as you'd expect. And it looks like Najin Sword are going to focus and try and take that turret down as quick as possible. Bottom turret already half health down, just four minutes gone into the game. Interesting because. TPA is about very much the minion kills and not getting damage on the turrets, whereas Nadin Sword is going for that early gold. So they got jumped on a little bit early game last time, falling behind in gold. They know they're behind in the jungle Ooh. and in mid, so they're trying to make more members available for their team. If they kill that tower down early, they'll have a lot of roaming presence early. Just a mistake, miss a hook in that top lane. Meanwhile, down this bottom lane, we do have the poke back and forward. And again, look at that. It's down to 559 hit points already, that bottom turret. They realize they're going to need help here. Is he going to open things up? Lil Ball is actually going aggressive again here. Going and putting that ward in. Is he going to head down the bottom? I think he might do. He just probably caught vision. Yeah, the ping goes on towards watch. They know that he was there. Possibly heading south. Oh, Lil Balls has passed straight through the Tribush ward. They're going to get spotted. They know he's coming. Are they prepared for it? That's the question. They may actually be baiting this Kane. a little bit because they're, they're not falling back. They're going for Kane. I think they have the damage on him. He's going to fight away. Lil Balls should be able to finish it off. Yes, he does. Gets first blood. Stanley's going to get taken down very low here. Lil Balls shouldn't be able to walk away for allow too much damage. Prey's going to try and catch on to him. Stanley's going to have to try and distract them. Lil Balls could well get caught out here. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, they're getting distracted as well. You can see Toys. That's going to be a twist of advance. Just about caught on. That should be the death of Lil Balls. That will be a double buff going back and forth. It's going to be Prey they want to give it to. He's gone away with it, ladies oh. and gentlemen. Oh, no! Prey managed to catch him out there. Stanley, though, should get caught out as well. They're trying to tower dive on. He's taken down very low as well. They're going to go for it here. Morgana, meanwhile, in the mid, was forced back. They are going to go for it. They're going to go for the dive. Song's going to come around. This is the dark binding, trying to shield it as much as possible, but Song picks it up. And the shield, would you believe it was a turret kill? He didn't get any damage down on Corky. 
And that's going to be surely the bottom turret going down as well. Song will finish that one off 2 1. Najin Sword with the lead. And what did Stanley just buy? He's coming back to lane with a Cage's lucky pick on Shen. Oh, AP really Shen. Curious choice. It could be the fact that he knew he needed GP10 items, and that is the cheapest one aside from Avarice Blade, which we would not want to use. He wanted the Heart of Gold, but he just decided he's turtling out in this lane. He's lost his tower, he's died. He is essentially useless until he gets level 6 with his ultimate. So many good plays there for Najin Sword, getting the initiative and taking aggression there. Counter gank, they baited that fight in from low balls and turned it around beautifully. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful stuff. And Watch, uh, Watch was obviously had that problem at the start. He was bullied, lost his red, as, as sorry, lost his red, struggled for the blue. Little Balls getting jumped on by McNoon here. That's the dart oh. behind him. Just Flash tried to catch on in that song, but Little Balls is going to back away from that one. And we did lose his double buff earlier on. And it is now a switch in lanes as well. We have the AD and support going up towards that top lane. So Prey at the moment just on his own. He's got to be careful he doesn't get it hooked in. He has got Kane on the way up. And Kane could be vital on that Sona as well. We talked about how strong he is on that champion. Could very much be a key part. They've got to be careful they don't leave Stanley too long though to solo this one lane. Stanley's gonna have to wait there it's just a matter of he fell behind he's level six the lane is pushed very far so he is able to farm some of this out but he got shut down pretty hard by that the death and the tower respectively mac noon also having his own issues only 18 mini kills from that lane he was not able to last hit a tower either there's a lot of members running up here in the top lane there's three from tpa and three from nashing coming in yeah little ball standing on top of the ward there they've spotted that straight away with that oracle actually it's, you know, uh, they've got a purple ward sorry no oracle what a mistake is just going to sit in that bush. Well, the blue buff is up. Be they might careful. be going for There's another steal. Four members of Najin Sword on this top lane. Now he is going to try and go for the steal here. Lil Ball's on the blue buff right now. You can see songs coming across. Are they aware that four members are there? Yes, they definitely are now. They just walk straight up there. It's going to be a five man push. Can they try and catch on? Song's not going to go up there. He's going to have to back away. He's not really got the mana to get involved in a major fight here. And instead, they're going to try and get back and protect that blue buff. There's the ward right on top of it though, and it does look like TP is going to let this one go. They're giving Stanley time to catch back up, which he is doing quite quickly oh, now. Lil Ball's going to try and smite it. He's going to try and smite it, and instead McNoon jumps on him, manages to get the stun down on him. McNoon, Lil Ball's is going to continue. He hasn't got level 6, so he can't hit, uh, hook anyone in. And instead, Toys will back away. And Taipei Assassins have to give up on that one. 8 minutes 30, just that one turret gone down. I say just that one turret, we are only 8 minutes in. Uh, but I'm just so used to the frenetic paces of these matches already. 2-1 in kills, and the gold difference still very much even, just 100 gold through. Finally, Macnoon getting down to the bottom lane. He's had a real trouble farming as well. He's level 5 to now Stanley's level 7. Large wave hitting the tower here. Jax really needs to get farmed before he can be useful. That 1v2 lane actually really shut down both Nack Noon and Stanley because the 80 carries are very fed, the tower's coming down, but overall, with all of Najin's aggression, this game's dead even in gold. Absolutely dead even. How's this middle lane working out? We saw Toys just absolutely fully in song in the last game. I'm not too sure it's going to quite work out yet, and I'm not too sure Toys is going to be allowed to just back away right there in full vision. I think he tried to just make himself uh, hidden away around that corner. Song putting the war down on Wraiths. Song farming up quite well. 71 to 82, and if you're just slightly out farming at the moment, Toys is. In terms of the uh, top and bottom lane, which is the two bruisers, Magnu, like you said, had fell behind a little bit. So these, these 2v1s both really backfiring for both champions. 75, though, for BB. BB definitely leading on the CS to 61. Of Corky, but of course, Corky picking up the kill and the assist. Oracle's just being picked up by Watch, so he's going to go looking for those. My eye toys, he's going to pick up the blue buff. I wasn't sure whether Lil Balls is going to keep it again. Obviously, you know, it's, it's helpful on Skarni. He's still only really level is. 5, though. Should be able to hit 6 in a moment compared to Watch, who had to hit 6 quite a while ago, actually. Now that he's 6, he does have his flash up. He's going to look to gank somewhere. Health a little bit low. He might have to shop. So Lil Balls getting that gank turned around on him early on has really set him back. They got the two blues for him early, which you'd think would get the Skarner going. So much farm has been deferred to toys, though. And once he got that death, he just hasn't been able to recover. So he's actually starting to fall a little bit behind. He has the boots of mobility. Lil Boss is going to be all about getting in for that one pull in team fights. And outside of that, he's not going to be committing that much. Yeah, Magnum keeping pressure on Stanley down in the bottom lane. Very much an even trade so far, but keeping that leap striking and power strike on him. Meanwhile, we are seeing Lil Boss again sneaking in towards that top lane. 
Mistake just waiting to see if he can land that hook. They want to clear out. He's going to overdrive his way in. It's not going to happen though. And just backs away, realizing he didn't have the situation. They know exactly where he is. Oh, he actually gave his position away as well. It's not helping. Meanwhile, they're going to dive on Stanley down the bottom lane. It's going to be a complete dive in. The Morgana Roll team should go off. And Song picks up the kill on Stanley there. And Mac Noon will be able to put a lot of damage down on this turret here. He's got a siege minion with him. Meanwhile, we can see they just had to flash away. That was Toys trying to catch on towards Watch there. Does put the ultimate down there, Watch, and protects himself. Toys is going to get that free farm in the middle lane. But meanwhile, the ping goes down. Mac Noon now shredded half the hit points already. Well, Ezreal ultimate coming across. He's just going to back off, though. The ping was already there. But he's shredded half the hit points already off that inner turret. And they are really working down that bottom lane. It's really interesting, though, with Stanley having to cave his lucky pick and the heart of gold despite dying two times and despite losing his turret. He's actually 400 gold ahead of Mac Noon in overall farm. So back in the day, Stanley, before gold pretend items were unique, pretty much forced people to make them unique because he built four <laughs> every game on Aurelia or Jarvan. Stanley, interestingly enough, also innovated the uh, Hextech revolver stacking on Vladimir. He would do four of them at once and have like 60% spell vamp. He's quite an innovator, and this is something we haven't seen in the past, is the Kate is lucky pick on Shen. If he's planning on just being passive and farming in the side lane, and he needs to catch up in lane, it could be really good oh, choice. They've, they've, hooked the they've hooked on towards Prey there. I'm not too sure if they got the damage. The crescendo goes across. Will it be enough to send things around? The Shen ultimate coming in now. Can they catch on towards Prey? They're going to have to smash. Can't you know? They will be standing on him. And now Kane's going to have to back away from this one. He has got watching support. You can see Morgana heading up the river. The Morgana song will be there. Little Balls is just off in the distance there, Macnoon coming up, and you can see how quick Najin Sword reacted to that one. They realized the danger, and the entire team swarmed towards that top lane. Toys now has to be careful he doesn't get caught out, and he uses that wall to a good advantage. Stanley, despite getting beaten up early, losing the tower and dying, is coming back in this game already, contributing entirely for that kill, turning it around, getting the flash taunt in, and they're really good at just continuing to keep people in game. Some may fall behind early, but then they pop back up. Next step is getting Little Balls going. He has that Oracle's Elixir. He has been behind in experience. Where is he going to be contributing? Because this seems to be what TPA is so good at doing, is just having everyone work together. They are. They haven't put a great deal of damage still on that top turret. PB is only taking about a half bit health. So as it is at the moment, Najin stored still with a huge advantage in terms of turrets. They've, obviously it's only 1-0, but that inner turret already nearly taken down. And Stanley actually quite happy to go 1v1 with Mac Noon here by the looks of it in this bottom lane. And they're going to trade blows a little bit. You can see Mac Stanley continuing to cause himself problems. Mac Noon will again probably just leap on him from this bush in a moment. And just trying to get that slow, slow farm. In the top lane though we have a three-man stack in Tribush. There goes the ward. Watches around there. Kane and Prey looking to see if they can bait anything out here from Mistake. And instead Watch has backed off. Blue Book's now spawned to expect to see Song heading back that way in a moment. Both of these teams actually going hit for hit very early. Looks like both AD Carry is going to be going for the Trinity Force. Both junglers having early Oracle's Elixirs. They pick them up before their second GP10 item. Both just with the Philosopher's Stone. You can see though, Watch even farther behind, yet to get the Boots of Mobility, whereas Low Ball has, has them as well. They're really just matching each other in so many ways here. Tower has been matched, but the Tower has been just matched by out farming and with GP10 items, the Oracle's matched. They're going to be taking a dragon fairly shortly. We still have both AD support up top. So forcing that dragon is going to be interesting. Oh, little Ball's got to be careful. He's just clearing out the Oracle. And immediately Mac Noon jumps on it. Didn't go for the Gamp Strike. Didn't get the stun. There's the wall. Good protection work from Toys. I've just seen the Crescendo in the top lane. They're going to hook on there. BB's going to be attacking. No, low, very low. Prey manages to get away with it. Kane is now just kiting Mistake around. Mistake's going to have that mana shield. Actually, no, he's got no mana. He's going to get the shield pop up there. And Prey managing to survive off the back of that one. And well, the Shen Ultimate didn't get a chance to come out because it was non available. And that is why Mac Noon now going to head towards the top. They're pinging. They want to go for Mistake in that top lane. He's Mac low Noon enough. They want to dive. dive. They want to dive him. He's going to jump in. The counter strikes up. Manages to get the ping off on him. Should be able to finish him off. Mac Noon's going to tank this one up. And he's going to be Prey that picks up the kill. And there is a great tower dive. 5 2 now. The advantage in terms of. I'm just seeing Matt Song in the mid there. Whether he's going to go for toys. No, the stun lands. Keeps him away. Dark Binding comes in. Has he got enough toys with no mana? And it's just going to let him live. They're pinging the blue steel as well. Here we come. They are going to go across. Lil Ball's actually on the blue at the moment. Watching Song. There's nothing at all that Toys can do about this one. He needs Stanley to come across and help out. Song's going to try and throw out the dark bind. He's not going to get it though. And Lil Ball's with the blue. But obviously they wanted to give that Anivia. That was the ideal choice. So both of these teams 
Still very close, even though we've had those turnarounds, both Stanley and Mac Noon have been able to contribute despite the early shutdown. Now we see Najin's sword. Since they've seen Ezreal top and Cork is running up bottom, they look to be able to force a five-man dragon. Everyone on TPA just went back to shop. This should be a free dragon. They have the oracles. They've cleared out the area. This is going to be a good move for them. They have the kill advantage. Soon they're going to have a bigger gold advantage. Yeah, very much like there will be a free dragon. Najin's sword giving them that 1k gold difference. So slowly but surely pick it up. Much they back away. It's going to give Taipei Assassins a little bit of free roam in this top. Can they try and trade quickly? They do have enough of a wave to try and take down this top turret. I think BB might try and push the advantage here. Yeah, they are. They're going to try and take the turret down, try and get something off the back of that turnaround. 5 2 currently for Najin Sword. They'll take it down. And that's going to pull the gold back even again. Just 400 gold between the two teams. Very close game still. Taipei Assassins 1 0 up. If you missed it, very, very aggressive stuff from Toys. Not able to pull himself across the game as much in this one, though. And Taipei Assassins in general really love that Athene's Unholy Grail. I've seen some of their matches in the GPL, and if they run two AP champions, they'll run two Unholy Grails. Anyone with mana who runs in the mid lane will go for it. He had it in the last game. He got it much earlier than this time on Anivia, but here we have it again. The Athene's Unholy Grail on Toys going to work out. This means that if he doesn't get the blue buff, he can still spam a lot of his spells. That works very well with low balls on Skarner, because Skarner is one of the most blue reliant junglers in the game and gets immensely more powerful when he can spam his spells back and forth. Looking down the rest of the items, some big caster items completed. Sonya's Hourglass onto Song. That's going to be great if he wants to flash initiate these team fights. They've been taking aggression already. They're 5-2. They want to continue it. When Corky gets that Trinity Force, they're really going to start rolling. Absolutely. Song picking up the Zonya's Hourglass as well. He's just going to farm away. So, let's see how Toys is going to stop this one. Of course, Blue Buff was just stolen away from him. He's trying to put that burst down on the Song, just farms up the way. But he's going to be able to do that so often without that Blue Buff that he's currently sat on Lil Balls. Lil Balls really hasn't been able to put himself around much this time. Hasn't been that aggressive. And this is the second time, you know, Skarner we saw in the first game on watch. Again, was unable to be aggressive, and that's the big thing with Skarni. You want to be able to get in there when the team fights happen, hook someone up, and cause a problem for you. They have, of course, got the ultimate from Mistake to try and silence that group fight. Blind hook coming out from Mistake there, not landing on anything because there was no one anywhere near. It's actually a fairly tricky team comp for low balls to pull the right target in. You don't want to pull Maokai or Jax in because they want to get there anyway. Morgana can block it with the Black Shield, and then Sona and Corky are generally so far at the back that if you run through to them, you may have gotten yourself killed already. So low balls going to have to be creative with the way he gets into these hooks. He's going to have to flank around team fights if he wants to get the right targets. He's going to have to surprise people, or they're going to have to just have man up fights where it's 5v3 or something and they can pull a Maokai or Jax and not get punished for it because as it is there's nothing really viable for him to get in team fights. So just seeing Morgana heading top he's gonna walk straight past the ward mistake though didn't even flinch actually stood there saying yeah I'm ready for this one I think Stanley was ready to ultimate up and help them out that ward is about to finish out they could try and hook on Kane here no vision of it. They do put the pink ward down, so they've cleared out the Baron ward. 19 minutes gone in this game. Wouldn't expect them. Meanwhile, down the bottom lane, Mac Noon and Stanley continue to trade blows, and it is going to be an attempt on blue here. They're going to think, maybe even hook blue through. No, mistake's just going to trundle away from that one. They realize it is up. Yes, they are. They're going to come around. They're going to clear out the ward. They're probably going to try and hook it through. Actually, Prey now has just picked it up. Oh! Got to be careful of McNoon. I was about to say some Stanley down that bottom lane. We're also seeing the blue getting hooked away there. Mistake's just keeping Prey away. Kane is there. He could try and poke the cross, and they have picked up the blue buff, so they're still on the blue buff there from Taipei Assassins as well. So I'm just trying to figure out why the gold is so even between both of these teams because it's six kills to two. They've both taken down a turret. That one dragon happened as well. So what's happened actually is with all those early GP10 items that stand oh, the dive on toys. Oh, here it comes. They've dived on toys. The twisted advance went under there. And then Mac News got a stun down as well. But the rest of the team are going to join in there. Lil Balls hooks on towards watch. They try to pull him on. The Ezreal ultimate comes dropped. But the crescendo is there again. Lil Balls gets dropped. Toys gets dropped. He's just got that rebirth to try and save him. The Shed ultimate coming in. Oh, and there's, there's just a spawn for Stanley. And that manages to get the hook on. Pulls Mac News away. Stanley's spawn time perfectly down there. He meant to die earlier on. Look at that coordination mistake pulling in as Shen ults in on him so he could turn that kill around. Those fights are razor thin. That was a two for one, I believe, and this game is still really, really close. And the gold coming in as they poke down. 
TP has gotten about 1,300 more gold from the GP10 items than Najin's sword, which makes up gold-wise for that tower or that dragon that they are down. Absolutely, and that obviously costs an oracle as well on Mount Fire, I believe. Watch with that oracle on, so it turns big advantage for them. And a steal there from BB as well on towards the race. And keep that gold flowing. So Trinity Force was completed by Prey as well. Ionic Spark being picked up by Shen. Interesting, Nats. We've seen the way Shen split push. He doesn't necessarily kill creeps that fast in the past, so he has two options. He can go with the Sunfire Cape, or he can go with that Ionic Spark. The Ionic Spark is more about dueling and more about just the aggression. It's a cheaper item. He can get there sooner, and he means he can split push more frequently. He's going for it right now. His ultimate's still on a long cooldown. Not that unsurprising of a choice. It came into favor a couple months ago, came back out for Sunfire Cape, and like a lot of these things we're seeing in this tournament, things are cyclical, and he's back to the Ionic Spark. It is indeed. Bloodthirst were also picked up by Ezreal. So very much the damage coming out on Ezreal this time. It's interesting we see the Asian teams going for that Bloodthirst step early, rather than over the Trinity Force. We've seen a few times. So we're getting towards, well, 21 minutes. Late game starting to close in, definitely the mid-game. How do you rate these two teams? I mean, what, how are we looking here? Who's got the stronger team as we start stretching the game out? Looks like Najin's sword definitely has the beefier team in a lot of Oh, the hook oh there's a hook! The hook's on Mac Noon, he should be able to jump back to the rest of his team. Instead, no, because that's going to be the ultimate card coming out from Nilbors. Nilbors gets caught though! Absolutely dropped where he stood. The stun comes out, but it's not enough because the Star Shield goes on. The Black Shield Morgana tries to pull them out. Stanley's going to get dropped. That's a double kill. They can get triple here. Mistake is taken out very low. Prey should be able to pick it up. Song stolen instead. Prey goes in. He Fortress in. Can't take down BB though. And he's backed away. And what a crazy engage. Honestly, it's we've seen it before. You do not want to hook Mac Noon into your team. And look how low everyone is on Najin's sword. Everyone escaping or flashing. That Inibial was unable to isolate anyone that they needed to. Najin's sword just pouncing on that opportunity. Blitzcrank initiating for them. And even though TPA has this team of hooks, this team of pulls, they have Shen to taunt. If they get the wrong target, it's going to turn oh, around on them negatively. Right, and they got to be really careful. Prey going very aggressive, and baby, the dark binding actually almost landed. He just sidestepped to it. I don't think he realized it was coming, and just sidestepped away. Let's have a check out a replay of that last fight. Let's check Everything it out. here started really well. They just hooked Mac and over. They think they're going to try to finish him off. <laughs> Well, we didn't really get to hear much of them. <laughs> well, much more subdued no, team fight. but meanwhile, Stanley, Stanley, Stanley in. takes down Mac Noon in the top lane there. Meanwhile, Mistake's going to get caught out here. The Shadows were coming in, though, on towards Mistake. They should be able to catch up towards Watch. Crescendo gets crossed. Lil Balls is going to be very low there. Watch is going to get dropped. That's an Oracle down. Lil Balls, meanwhile, they catch up towards Song. Song gets dropped as well. This is a great turnaround by Type Assassins. They're going to try and push on towards Prey. He's got to back away. They should be able to pick up the middle turret. They're going to target it. They pinged it on, and they will. And Kane's got to be very careful. He doesn't get taken away from this one. Stanley, happy to take a tower hit and they will pick up a three for nothing a three for one sorry i should say and stanley well actually technically it was four because they did take mac noon down earlier on separately Najin's sword needed that fight to happen about two seconds later you saw song actually zani's hourglass in the middle of them yeah but his alt was on about a one second cooldown when he did that he tried to alt and then zani's but it wasn't off of cooldown yet after the zani's came out he got pulled silence died and that was just Terrible timing for them overall because if he got that alt off with his onions, they could have turned that fight around. They will have turned that fight around, but that's definitely brought them back into it. Is that actual gold advantage for Taipei Assassins right now? Despite the fact they're 11 7 down, 2 2 in turrets, they have picked up that dragon and of course they farmed very well. Let's just have a look at those farm down the lines. You can see the two top lane, or technically bottom lane in this case, 132 to 127. So slight advantage currently for Stanley in that one. Two junglers actually, little balls with an advantage in that one. Mid lane, you can see 245, that's literally a farming machine. Definitely holding an advantage. So Toys again out farming Song. Meanwhile, the bottom lane ADs, or the top lane as it was in this case, Ezreal 211. That is going to be BB with the advantage. And that is giving them a de definite gold difference. It's only 1k, but it's going to count later on. So much of it, as you say, is about the farming because they lost the dragons, they're down at kills, but they're up in gold. That's the GP10 items, that's those minion kills. They're doing a very, very good job of just keeping up with this game. Lowball's trying to scout through, but he did lose that Oracle, so they Twice. are Oracle's list entirely. They need the third member to take this Oracle's here. It's time for Mistake to buy it. That's what he has. He's the one clearing out the wards right now.
because if Will Balls were to keep buying them and dying, he'd never be able to get enough items to go in and fight. Yeah, and Kane's had to do the exact same thing. Watch, lost the Oracle in the last fight. Kane's had to pick up the snack there, so the two supports having to pick up those Oracles is something that uh, I guess anyone in solo queue expects. <laughs> but obviously across the 5v5 teams, these pro teams, they definitely share the load. It's something you should see across the whole of League of Legends. Trinity Force has been completed by Mac Noon now, though. And that's going to give him that gold difference, that damage difference on Jax. He's going to start jumping in and being beastly. He needs to make himself a little bit more tanky, though. And as it is, Little Balls, who would you target, really, as Little Balls? Is he going to go for Prey? Could Prey could just Valkyrie away? Mac Noon could technically just jump away. They just need to time themselves perfectly with the, the stun from Toys, Stanley's taunt, the hook, maybe, from Mistake. They need to try and catch someone and just keep them immobile for a while. And it's looking like that war's going to get required to keep Magic Sword away there. They wanted to try and hook on someone type of assassin if they didn't want anything. As we said earlier, it's so difficult for TPE to hook the right target because you pull in a Jax or a Maokai and they want to be there anyway. You pull in Morgana and she's just going to ult and yeah. Zhonya's. It's just a counter build to the hook team in a lot of ways. So they have to get creative. Lil Balls has to be able to sneak around. If he can get onto Kane, honestly, and somehow kill him before Crescendo, that would be immaculate because so many of these crescendos are hitting four and five Ezreal, members. Steel gets steel. the steal with the blue. BB gets the steal. Beautifully done that. And he's going to be happy with that one. He just launched off his ult team. So thank you very much. Did they even have a ward? There? There's no, there's no, no ward they have it covered with wards, actually. Oh, they did. They yes, have yes, a multiple yes, path. Sneaky there. Multiple path. All en route. They should be able to take out the inner turret here. The rest of Nanjin Sword are not in position. Yes, they are. They're going to get on. They're going to chunk the damage down. Mac Noon is coming in from behind. Is he going to go for the aggression? They're backed away. They are just drawing them in. And they've caught watch, and they've had to force the flash away. Mistake trying to get the hook on Prey there as well. And they did back away, but the turret went down. And a successful pull from Mistake there. And you can see Taipei Assassins now with that split push from Stan. They're going to go down towards the bottom turret. Bottom turret. We're going to push mid in the sort of going to counter push. They are going in towards this inner turret, though. The middle turret, can they? Is it going to be a base race? That's the question. We have a five on five. It's entirely possible. We've got bottom lane type assassins on the inner turret. I think Nadjin sort of going to have to react right to it. Now. They are backing off. Can they get back in time? There's going to be the inner turret going down with Taipei Assassins. We're going to continue pushing on. They've pulled away, and we are not going to get the base race we all wanted to see. They were daring each other to go in there. Taipei Assassins would have came out on top there. They were starting on an inner turret, whereas Taipei Assassins yeah. were starting in the middle. Normally the mid lane is faster than the others, but because there was already one turret advantage, that was not something Najin Sword wanted to engage on. Good trade overall by Taipei Assassins because the farther in the turret gets, essentially the more valuable it becomes from a map control perspective. So, counterplay by Najin to not lose the gold, but the map control is now gone for that portion. And it's interesting to see how different a build we see on Toys is Anivia compared to, say, Froggen's Anivia. He's gone rapid on Death Gap of Themes. Meanwhile, we'd see, we'd see all sorts of randomness from Froggen. We'd, we'd see Warmogs in there, whatever they want. A lot of the things that Froggen does when he builds Anivia is he just tries to get a whole bunch of health and mana. That's why he'll go Tear the Goddess early and then straight into Warmogs because he loves these kind of sustaining fights. But Toys is much different. He's about multiple engagements with the mana regen from the themes in Holy Grail and just burst damage. He wants to win these fights quickly, which is just how TPA plays. And TPA looking like they want the fight right now. They are looking for it. They're clearing out the wards. They're going very aggressive and just we're trying to force something out here. Mistake is having a really good job clearing out all those Baron wards. Now, 29 minutes gone into this game, so it's 11-7. And that gold advantage, slowly but surely, is creeping Taipei Assassin's way. And the speed of Stanley's split push now is actually immense because we said you have a choice between a Sunfire Cape and an Ionic Spark for split pushing. Both. Well, he has both of them, <laughs> so he's going to be clearing those minion waves really, really quickly. Work pokes going around, but neither team really wants to bait a Baron right now because the teams are close enough that if you get caught in a bad position, you're going to lose the fight and then the game. The next big team fight win, if it's substantial, is going to snowball into that Baron. Right now, though, TPA does seem to have control. They're going to rush down this dragon, and Najin might not oh. be able to get this Baron in time. Are they going to react and try and squeeze a Baron? They have initiated. Watch it started off here. They may try and get the effect. Counter here. They do have enough damage. He's running straight for him. Taipei Assassin's heading straight up there. Here comes Stanley. He's going to try and get a taunt across them. Of course, Lil Balls could hook on someone and immediately they disengage. And a wise, wise call there. Mistake wants to get a hook on someone. They're going to try and counter, push them off. And Mistake's going to go for a hook through the wall here. Is it going to be a blind hook? He's caught Mac Noon! He's caught Mac Noon! Can he do the damage on him? He does manage to get a lead strike away. And Lil Balls has gone aggressive. He's gone deep. Crescendo comes across. They do manage to shut him down. That's going to be Song also going in there. Manages to get the Morgana ultimate. Then they get the power fist on towards Song. Song's going to get dropped. 
That's a double kill for Toys. They're going to turn this one into a possible inhibitor. So they're going to push on the inhibitor turret. The turret will go down. And that was a total blind hook there. Though they managed to throw out the ward just before it. I didn't notice that go down. So mistake. Popped the ward down. Pulled the hook. Very nice play, Taipei Assassins. They were sneaky about how they pulled. They didn't pull in Mac Noon where the team could immediately respond to it. There's no way everyone can make it over that wall in time. They also walled off a lot of the team with the Anivia, almost screwed over low balls when he tried to flash in, but now they're all extremely low. This is actually dangerous. They're, they're gonna go straight for it, but there's three strong members of Najin. They might try to peel a 5v3, even though they're all low. This is gonna be close. The hook, the hook on Mac Noon again. They brought him back in. They managed to silence him off, so he can't leave Strike away. Choice is gonna get rebirth pop, though. Mac Noon is gonna get dropped before the rebirth to use. Now they're going to turn around towards Watch. Can they manage to get the hook down? Bebe is going to close in. Has Lil Balls got his ulti available? No, he's not. And they're just going to back away. So again, they've baited Mac Noon in. It's 11-10. Still in favor of Najin Sword in terms of kills. But wow, that gold definitely slipping towards Taipei Assassin's Quicksilver Sash. Picked up by Toys. Wow, what a game. And look at Toys. He's getting really, really strong here. The Quicksilver Sash in there to counter if he gets caught by a Dark Binding, if he gets caught by a Jackson, he does not want to get egged in the wrong spot. Now it's time for TPA to start getting these pokes around the Baron. They're already one game up in this series. If they finish this off, Najin's Sword will be eliminated from the World Championships. The 80 carry builds, curious here, BB has the Last Whisper, Bloodthirster, and Trinity Force, whereas Prey has yet even to finish his Infinity Edge after that Trinity Force, so a big lead from the 80 carries, item-wise, gold-wise, another blue steal by them. They're looking very strong in team fights, and Najin has to create something special here because right now, GP nope. is just looking stronger. <laughs> All the blue de aggroed. Didn't have the damage, and they're gonna have to just let it go back. Stanley's gonna come around. Oh, meanwhile, Minipia had picked up the blue of his own, so it's gonna be the double blue stack. Not double blue stack, but obviously a double blue steal. And that's gonna be BB coming around. Oh, they've gotta be careful though. And immediately Kane trying to catch on towards Toys there. Toys has been split apart from his team here. Taipei Assassins are going to try and close in around it though. Our Najin Sword going to try and force something here. They want an open fight. They've had too many hook fights. They do not want to get hooked again. And they do back away from that scary push position that Mistake was trying to pull them towards. There are so many wards that TPA just littered Najin's jungle with. They're going to try to go clear these out right now. I wonder if, Nad if TPA is going to try to get a good hook in while they're in that sea of wards. They don't get that one on to Mac Noon. They're trying to get another through the wall hook with this sea of wards. Najin's going to try to get a fight in this corridor so the Crescendo can they're hit everyone. There's a pull. The they're coming around the back. There's the pull. Now watch was coming around the back side though. And this time Mac Noon is going to jump in. He's going to go towards Soyz. The Crescendo goes across. Lil Balls is going to get dropped very quickly this time. Could Najin sort pull this fight back? They need to keep this fight up. They need to. Or they will be out of this tournament. Surely no. Because Saipan says it's get the whole ace off the back of that one. And Najin sort initiated. Could that be? Saipan Assassin going through to the semi-final versus the Moscow 5. GG given. That is it. 2-0. Taipei Assassins. They take